there's always this really cool point in art where a piece moves from just a subject to more of an overall feeling or atmosphere. It can be hard to describe why you like a piece of art when it's that way. And today's artist is somebody who knows how to create the feeling of a daydream. Welcome to the eighth episode of Best Art on Earth, where I go over all the best art that's happening right now on our planet. And why is it the best art on Earth? Because I said. <laughs> but also, I'm going to take these art fundamentals and I'm going to try to explain to you how this artist gets such a cool atmosphere from her work. Today's artist is Bear Brick Gia, or Carmen Lowe. She's actually quite well known for her portraitures. But it's even more interesting for me when someone's well known for something and then does the complete opposite. Which in this case, I want to look at her series where in, instead of drawing the face, she draws everything else. All of these pictures have such a beautiful feel, but when I saw this piece, I immediately felt the warm daydream feel of a summer afternoon. So I'm going to take this piece and put it on my iPad and I'm going to try to break down how she makes you feel this through her piece. If you've seen any of my episodes so far, you'll know I mention emphasis basically every time. And the reason is, if you don't have emphasis, you end up with something like a Where's Waldo. Disorientation or getting lost in the piece is the point. A lot of good artists like to direct people's attention to one thing or to emphasize a point. That's why we talk about emphasis so much. I'm probably going to say emphasis a few times in this one because there's two different ones. The first emphasis is on the man to raise themselves. And they've got a lot of standard emphasis things going for them. They're in a frame, they're a bright color, and they're moving at a diagonal here um, in contrast with the clouds. So there's a lot of things calling our attention to the manta rays. I would say that this is actually the true focal point of the piece if not at least equal with the manta rays. So we're just gonna go into how she created an emphasis right here without breaking the mood or the feel of her daydream. An easy way to have brought attention to her would have been to color this red. This is too exciting, too bold. How does she use color then? She's wearing a very similar color on her shirt to the walls and the floor. And she's got, it's not the same blue, but she's got a blue for the skirt just like a blue for the sky. So she's almost chosen the same color palette in her outfit as the piece. One obvious way to find the focal point is always just to turn it down. Once I take this color off, I'm really not looking there for the most part. And then you see just how dark that hair is. Ever so slightly, she's telling you with value that this girl is the focal point. I'm gonna talk about contrast and lines at the same time. A lot of times it's hard to make a piece feel natural when it's straight on like this, where you have these straight uh, horizontal and vertical lines. It usually feels really cold or really architectural and just flat. But what it does is it creates contrast with her figure and the easel here. She's sitting towards an angle and so is this canvas. They're in direct contrast with this very flat piece. So it actually makes her pop forward. This also plays into what I call the rule of one. Whenever you put one of something on a piece of art, it tends to stick out. Another thing I'm gonna say is that she did really well with the form of the figure or the pose in this case. And so what I've done here is I've actually outlined her character. And if you look at it, you can tell what she's doing or have kind of an idea or a guess at what she's doing. Zero lines, zero color, just the pure silhouette. And it's really easy to read. Another thing she has here is a pattern with the foliage. Besides some of these bigger leaves on top here, we really aren't paying attention for the most part to the lower foliage. If anything, what they do is they actually tell your brain or your eye, don't worry about looking right here. Look at what's important. We know this is a dream because there's manta rays in the sky. Cool. She's got these really elongated, you know, too long to be practical legs on the easel and the, and the stool. At first, I don't even know if people realize how long those legs are. They don't call attention to themselves, but they do add to the dreaminess. Kind of a, a slight reminder that it is a dream, but at the same time, what it's doing is it's pushing this character into the clouds. I think if she was sitting right here, it would not have the same feel. I think it would, she would almost feel like she's not important. So by elevating her is another subtle way to make her feel like the focal point of this piece. If you guys like Carmen's work as much as I do, go check her out at Bear Brick Gia 
And if you want a piece of her work to kind of brighten up your home or your office space, she totally sells those as well in her store. Thank you, Carmen, for letting us look at your wonderfully peaceful work. And I'll see you guys next week with some more cool art.